I read way back a story that a person was a gold medalist throughout, but for the first time he didn't get the promotion at the right time. He felt so disgusted and he got into a depression. So he was not emotionally that strong the way it should have been. And they say emotional intelligence affects the performance, the physical health, relationships, and social intelligence. And that is why we quite of late people say that one, if one who has played sports, he has also normally seen victories, losses at the same time, whereas in academics you see at the half quarterlies, half yearlies, and the yearlies. Whereas in sports, if you're playing, let's assume tennis, you have sets, badminton, so you have a frequent thing and therefore they are more stronger. And since those who have been connected with Beyond Law CLC, we are on the 212th webinar and continued uh, since we started our law. And since the topic also of the group's name Beyond Law CLC reflects that we also take topics beyond law. And beyond law doesn't mean that you have to violate law. It's simplicity to say that we can take issues which could also affect a common man, though there is a, now what we say, overlapping of the law as well as a common man. Same way, emotional intelligence would not be only restricted to lawyers. Yesterday, I saw the post, ma'am, saying that we would be connecting with the lawyers, Pan India. But I would rather say professional students and the family. A lot of, in fact, my relatives also watch the YouTube of these webinars or sometimes they also watch it live on the platform as well as on the different social media since like right now also we are live on the Facebook as well as on the YouTube and Instagram. So in that pursuit, it will, I will say that, uh, and fortuitously ma'am and I share a common place that is from the Tri-City itself. But today I can also say that since we are both locally connected, but we are going globally to the effect to share what are the emotional intelligence skills for success and way forward. Forward is forward thinking, just like what we were, I was sharing with Ma'am Manjula, who's a known Josh speaker and a life skills coach. We thought that we have all, we are all thinking out that there is a change in the life. But what are the skills to move forward? And I remember the famous dialogue of the movie, uh, How's the Josh? So before we take off for the emotional intelligence skills, um, we are too glad for having Man Manjula Thakur on the platform to share her spirits, the josh and the intelligence. And the way she can intellect intelligently take us over for the one hour is also a skill to be learned. As they say that the lawyers generally know how to dabble with the words, put the right words in the right perspective and hammer their points. And that is the skill. But Emotion, irrespective of the merits of the case, have to be maintained balanced. And these are the nuances which uh, Ma'am Manjula will take us forward, looking forward for the insights. And today for a change, we have allowed everyone who wants to participate actively can unmute himself or herself if, if he or she wants to ask a question directly. Or as Manjula Ma'am has said that she will have the more participative interaction. So, Again, this is again change what, what I remember. It said that old order changed it, yielding place to new. So let's see how the new things shape up. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Vikas. And uh, I indeed feel honored, privileged. In fact, yes, um, now I know I hold major responsibility to be amongst the people who actually govern the law. And, uh, you know, I have to abide by, uh, yes, uh, those, uh, you know, certain norms and actually come up to those, ex those expectations. So, uh, yes, but then I, I am really all the more, I think, uh, encouraged and enthralled also to be a part of such an enlightened and enriched group of people. So, uh, yes, uh, emotional intelligence, uh, that happens to be the topic for the day. And uh, something uh, which is, you know, a, a new upcoming, a trending, um, you know, a concept specifically in the professional world. And uh, I think, uh, you know, the more technical or more specialized we are in a specific field, uh, we, um, I don't know how 
much we value this emotional aspect or how much do we feel ki yes it has to be included or a part and parcel of our professional scenario as well so before i start with anything i wanted to start with a question and uh, i'm glad to know that yes uh, beyond uh, law clc started with these you know series of webinars and today happens to be the uh, 212th uh, you know webinar so congratulations to you sir for um, you know keeping up the momentum and uh, yes actually igniting and uh, enlightening uh, you know individuals during these distressed times so especially during these uh, you know uh, these difficult times of covid 19 i think two aspects became really um, important or significant uh, one is the mental health and the other is emotional wellness right so i i uh, want to start with this only how much you know maybe irrespective of what profession we come from but then how much are these two aspects you know essential especially during the most challenging or the threatening times uh, uh, to be kind of restored or to be kind of achieved mental health and emotional wellness any one of you with all due permission of uh, vikas chatrat sir today we are uh, like you know having an open house and interactive session so all of you have an access to unmute yourself and participate so that happens to me my first um, you know uh, the question uh, to be yes uh, kind of any one of you can share your inputs related to it how much do we feel that we need to kind of work upon our mental health and emotional wellness especially during these you know this these distressing times of today so i would look up to you know uh, any responses please and i will be more than glad if you could unmute yourself and even put on your video video is a choice but if you could you know have a more of a uh, a live interaction yeah hi <clears throat> answer anyone yes <laughs> please uh, i mean this is an absolute informal uh, you know forum because as it is i am an, a very unconventional person seriously telling i really don't know how to you know much um, kind of deliver lectures or or speeches even if i'm a josh um, you know speaker but then i have always been into you know more of an interaction and hearing it from my participants and then only i'm able to give back my best if i feel that yes i'm able to engage and involve my people so yes mental health and emotional wellness how much do we think it is like you know uh, has become an essential paradigm in the present circumstances any one of you please i can only take the lead because okay. right now uh, right now they are not in the mold they say that True. one has to rise from the slumber they were always in the receptive mode rather than uh, sharing the inputs <laughs> okay. I, i can only say that emotional and mental health is growing with the flux of time and probably with the more of social media we are also right. at the same, uh, with the uh, time started believing to the effect right. that there is a, some concept like an emotional intelligence otherwise during I, our times at the first first blast it was to be said that he is quite emotional and mental meant uh, related with the mental disability as such but the, with the flux of time people have started believing that mental health is also right. like uh, during these webinars what we have learned is that mental health right. is just like any health which has to be looked upon and it can always be developed better and same is with the emotional otherwise initially it used to be said that an emotional person cannot take decisions but now emotional intelligence is that how you look for how you revisit yourself how you uh, rework on yourself and then how you move forward true true uh, i would really um, you know uh, acknowledge uh, mr vikas you have a lot of input and insight into this uh, you know the world of emotions which we all experience and we go through but then the primarily the the requirement is that how much are we balanced with our emotions and then simultaneously during the course of the you know this talk this discussion today uh, we would even understand how much these emotions have an impact on each one of us as an individual as a uh, uh, you know yes a working professional right irrespective from what specialization or what domain that we come from so keeping in mind the emotional um, you know uh, mental health and uh, the uh, the emotional wellness aspect and i think uh, very rightly said by mr vikas that in the present circumstances we all have realized the uh, the importance the uh, you know the significance of those these two aspects that how essential it is to be mentally balanced or to have your 
mental ability to the best of you know um, uh, its capacity or its potential uh, not only during these times but i think in every circumstance and every situation if you lose your mental balance or if you are not able to you know generate those positive or those uh, rational thoughts then somewhere things get you know absolutely upside down or hey why go hey why and similarly emotions how much is it that we are influenced by our emotions and how much they have a role or a part to play in our professional journey and especially even in our personal life so i have a short presentation to be uh, shared for which i would ask for the um, please for the uh, presentation share uh, screen sharing access uh, yeah vikas sir i would like to like have yeah yeah just try that sure sure, sure. yeah okay i thank you so much so um, yeah now as the i hope i am sharing my screen is it visible i cannot see is it visible it started off it will come on the screen right now yes i Sure. Okay, I think it's it's visible now, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, now that's the topic for today, uh, which says emotional intelligence skills for success and way forward, for which specifically being being emotionally balanced. Even before we understand that there is some sort of intelligence which is known as emotional intelligence, I wanted to that's why get your attention on to yes, emotional balance, mental um, you know health, being mentally um, you know channelized. or be you know giving your best of your mental ability or potential so that yes in whatever um, you know professional domain or in whatever you know personal capacity that you're working you are able to always give your best right and in fact now there is a present day terminology earlier we used to hear it that you know um, a healthy mind resides in a healthy body but now we have realized that actually mind is the main um, uh, you know the controller so basically your mind or your brain controls the body functioning how effective you are in your you know hand skills or how much uh, you know you are in your uh, kind of swiftness or uh, 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 you know your how much action oriented you are or fa how fast you take up your decisions is all about your mental ability and that also channelizes or controls your body fitness or you know keeps you away from different ailments or maybe even affects your immunity and stamina which i think are the terminologies which we have started you know realizing the uh essential uh, aspects of it or the need of it in the present circumstances before i move ahead again with anything else i have a a questionnaire on the screen and now as i said i'm always into more of like you know engagement and involvement so i i cannot actually move ahead before you you know give me some responses or you connect with me so now this questionnaire is very simple it has 20 questions there and to each question there is a response like yes or no right so simply you just have to you know be be clear with your choices it can be either yes or it can be either no right uh, and this is only for yourself i'm i will not be asking that what are your you know responses to which uh, in fact these are not even questions also these are just statements so i am not going to ask to which statement did you respond yes or to which did you respond no this is only for your own self evaluation right of your own for your own understanding but the only requirement is that you have to be uh, sincere you have to be most um, you know honest to yourself and attempt these questions so uh, 20 questions yes and no and i, and I don't think so it it should take more than uh, you know i do i don't think so 2 to 3 minutes so your time starts now uh, now please try to attempt all the questions so that you get a better understanding that what are we trying to reach up to and in case any statement is not clear please you can ask me today all of you have an access to uh, you know unmute yourself or put your responses in the chat box hello hello yes yeah hi hi um, um yeah uma ma'am right yeah right Yes, i turn yes. my video on as vikas uh, vikas sir said to turn your <laughs> video on so yes, i have yes, done it today and yes. uh, texting shall 20 i will give the answer only of uh, 20 uh, 17 will i to control anger no 
and rest of yes answer will be yes okay uh, out of From 20 1 to 16 and okay see 1 to 16 and uh, 18 to 20 will be my yes answer and okay. the only the 17 will be no okay only the 17th is no oh nice okay and i really appreciate your um ma'am yeah. um, and your um, you know openness that you are expressing this on a public forum that where you could not you know uh, give a yes response and uh, thank you so much for that whole hearted participation and i request rest of you also to please i am i once again in fact that was uma ma'am's generosity that she spoke up about her responses but i would not ask you about your responses this is something very personal Uh, it's only if you are as large hearted as uma ma'am if you want to share it from your end i don't mind but otherwise yes you can just keep it to yourself also uh, uh just a little request in the last 20th statement there's a typical error it reads like i try to put in my beat in whatever i do but then that's not beat it is best in whatever i do so i give you another one minute rest all of you please yes. you know, go through it and then we'll we'll conclude what were we trying to do they say lawyers can give interpretation and beneficial legislation uh, beneficial interpretation has to be given everybody thought it was heartbeat no 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 okay so uh, i think i'll stop sharing if everybody is done with their responses i can stop sharing so that i can see my audience i'll i'll stop sharing the screen yeah okay i'm 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 back to my uh, yes audience here so we just did a short exercise where it was um, you know those 20 statements there and we had to give the responses to it as yes and no <coughs> um, um, very generous right and she was the first one to take up that initiative and she spoke about her responses uh i would not as i said as promised i would not be asking where did you say yes and where did you say no but i only want to know what was your more response more yes more no equal equal or anything beyond that how many say more yes you can answer in the chat box as yes if you don't want to write i mean if you don't want to speak up more yes okay i can see some hands raised uh, anubha ma'am from uh, ma'am from bangalore thank you so much and it's indeed a privilege to have you ma'am here and uh, okay um, i get some responses in the chat box also uh, and yes for all um, that's pile advocate pile uh, for now except for number 4 6 10 and 17 okay and um, i think ravinder bindra ji you're answering as that yes more yes is your response can i can i get some more responses please in fact what i can understand and what is my perception about advocates is that they are one of the most daring people around right most courageous and most um, uh, you know people who would not even uh, uh, think you know that yes oh and now i'm <laughs> okay shubham sharma says more yes and uh, vikas sir more yes veshali says more yes uh, of course uma ma'am you say that 1 to 16 all are yes and 18 to 20 is also yes just the 17th one became a little hitch right and uh, um, ramu writes uh, mr ramu writes uh, 13 yes great so anybody else uh, yes want to share their responses more yes except few subodh so singh ji right okay so uh, i think um, i am really really obliged that i got this whole hearted participation right in fact uh, to be very uh, fortunate i was very very um, you know i wanted to share a secret from my end i was really really kind of uh, um, you know curious about this session and i was wondering how am i going to cope up with so many advocates and legal people around right because this is one uh, very uh, exclusive of kind of forum that i'm taking up today and this morning only i was doing a webinar and one of my participants said that ma'am you know you're very good in taking out secrets people i mean somehow they are you know they went out their you know their most personal uh, uh, things also with you i mean that that's kind of the the ability that you have and then i i was feeling very little more confident i said then then maybe i can you know be a, uh, i can fit into this uh, forum of you know advocates around because that's how we specialize that we pe we coax people or we convince people to you know reveal their secrets and keep up Uh, come up more most uh, you know transparently so uh, nice i got a lot of responses and the, the best part is most of you came with yes right um 
Oh, thank you so much, Advocate Pyle. You said <laughs> I made you feel comfortable. I wonder how did I do that? But uh, believe me, because you were involved into it, you were engaged doing something. I think that happened to be the, the best thing. Uh, okay, Risha, uh, you have a question and I'll be taking up that question. Basically, the query is how can I deal with a bad day? I'm glad that you've already thought about a query and that is something related to the topic today. And I'll be taking up that, you know, uh, yes. Okay, now- Alma is also from Bombay. Oh, okay, great. So, uh, yes. Now, uh, what do we? What do you think? What all? What you? Each one of you have been doing? More yes, more no. You know, what were we trying to explore basically? What was the outcome or the interpretation of this whole exercise? Okay, Gopi already uh, says if more no, then what do I do, right? And uh, okay, so what what has been the you know the purpose of this whole exercise? Anybody, anything which you felt, you realized, you experienced while you were attempting it, what was it leading us to? To assess ourselves, uh, really nice, very nice pile, uh, advocate pile. I'll congratulate you for that. You could have a clue about it that yes, we were trying to assess ourselves, right? And assess ourselves on what perspective? For, for what skill or what capability of ours were we trying to assess ourselves? I think I'll, uh, yeah, open the chat box next so that. So what, on what skill or what, um, you know, capability of ours were we trying to assess ourselves? Oops. Any, 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 um, you know, any idea, any clue, whether we are positive or not, our mindset, yes, very nice, very nice on our emotions, accepting change, Overcoming our weaknesses. Oh, great. Uh, lovely. I am, um, yes, I feel more encouraged getting all these responses and to assess our skills uh, and work on whatever negatives are there in us, right? So, yes, we were definitely trying to assess our mindset, our thoughts, our perspectives, our ideologies, or all together our attitude towards life, right? Uh, now, let me uh, once again uh, go back to my screen and so that I can share the, you know, the whole um, interpretation or the whole uh, basically concept of this uh, small exercise that, we done, that we've done. Um, just a second. As you said, it was definitely an assessment about yourself, right? And primarily to understand your emotional skills right? Uh, now, emotions, which we always take it as our feelings, our, uh, um, you know, ways of expressing, right? Uh, or maybe what we experience or what we kind of feel, right, are our emotions. But then we can actually kind of enhance, upgrade ourselves with some specific emotional skills, right? That we would be talking during the flow of the session. And then simultaneously accepting ourselves for our strengths and also understanding where the areas we need to improve. Now, wherever you got a no was, was the area where you have to make some amendments, some alterations or some modifications to improve upon yourself. If I can uh, really reflect upon, uh, I need to go back to the previous one. Uh, Advocate Uma was the first person to come up with her response and she said she got all yes, except for the point number 17, where it was, I can control my anger. And to which she says she, she has a no response. Now that means this is one area where she has to improve herself, right? But then altogether, as many of you have got more of yes as a response, it is primarily that you are someone who is in foolproof self-acceptance, 
that means when i say full proof self acceptance it means you are ready to accept yourself with all your strengths with all your uh, areas of improvement or maybe you can even call them weaknesses which each one of us has in there right all of us any one of us who might be the most experienced one who might be the most uh, uh, you know the most capable one but then also each one of us we have some weaknesses right or maybe we can call them we can have a positive terminology for it calling it as an area of improvement right but then beyond everything we are somebody who are more balanced right we accept our challenges we are ready to face disappointments or uncertainties in life and overall you are an active happy and a positive person if you have more yes as your response now there was this um, you know gopi who asked i don't know whether gopi happens to be an advocate or not because there was no mention as a you know there was not a prefix there as an advocate so gopi had asked that what if you have more no as a response so there there is basically just a need to make some certain alterations some certain modifications and to enhance your emotional skills of basically having uh, you know a better clarity about your own emotions right and simultaneously maybe valuing the emotions of others also so these are some skills that we need to develop emotions we go through emotions throughout the day right we experience so many emotions in a day and majority of the times what happens is that we are all together in a state of confusion or chaos that what is it happening with me maybe i am under this stress you know anxiety maybe i'm feeling little irritated maybe i'm feeling little restless but i really don't know that what emotion is affecting me the most or what is the exact reason for it so primarily what we need to do is we need to have a stronger clarity about our emotions and uh, yes then only we will be able to balance our emotions right or maybe manage our emotions more effectively so these are those certain emotional skills that we need to develop within ourselves and then um this is nothing a major as major a task you can simply start by smiling first of all i would say and then gradually engaging yourself in all those activities which you enjoy or which add more positive energy or make you feel more encouraged or inspired in life right so before i move on uh, right i would once again come back to the screen right and now i have another question in mind right the question is that uh, uh, when i say you can start you know um, enhancing your emotional skills or start becoming more positive in life for which you just need to give a start by smiling now now does that work or does that have some logical or some realistic significance yes ma'am it is okay okay uh, uma ma'am why do you feel is that uma ma'am or dr rashmi yeah yeah that's me only that's me okay. only okay yes, so yes yes uma ma'am how do you feel that has a relevance or that something you know logical uh ma'am like uh, what i think that's from my point of my, my yes. point of view yes. once you get up when you are with your out with your friends or with your family whatever if we start with a smile it gives that boosting enhance to your own personality and the way we talk with them i mean i feel i don't know exactly my answer would match or no but i feel yes one a smile on a face and it gives a positive approach to other people as well true, i think in true. that way it works definitely a smile exactly. makes a lot of changes ma'am that's true, true. true. true wow thank you so much ma'am ma that was such a uh, i would say a whole hearted and um, you know um, uh, i mean a, a very heartening response in fact you said it without any inhibitions without any you know reluctance yes smile makes a lot of difference and uh, uh, very rightly uh, you said it uma ma'am that it actually kind of benefits even the people around but primarily even before it benefits anybody else it benefits you as an individual exactly ma'am you right. you feel more confident you start feeling more uh, i would say energized or you suddenly start feeling that okay maybe the whole situation or the circumstance has changed right yes ma'am um, monila says it is logical when you start your work with a smile that means you are taking that job positively as a challenge oh great yes so uh, 
smile is that that effective that beneficial right i mean uh, it, it it is a in fact a very strong driving force also many a times and especially i i can really um, you know uh, imagine the kind of uh, uh, means uh, the work challenges especially people from you know the legal background right advocates being here you have to be you know kind of dealing with people who are as it is in chaos all those conflicting or crisis situations right where if you actually kind of miss out on your smile or you you are not able to kind of you know um, uh, uplift your own spirits then as it is it is such a challenging situation in whichever you are there right so and then uh, apart from smiling something which is very very important is that you have to really engage yourself in something which you like or love doing more which keeps you channelized which keeps you more positive or you know again gives you a, a kind of a boost up for the day or for the uh, for those more difficult or more distressing times that we we kind of face during the course of today now i once again go back to the screen and i think this was just a self assessment so that you have a a fair idea of uh, you know the kind of person or the individual you are and you really know yourself where you have to improvise yourself or where is it that that emotional balance or that mental health aspect is missing in life somewhere if you are not able to um, you know there was a question i think i'll go back to this uh, the previous one there was a statement something like i am happy about 5 out of 7 days right so in a week right if you are happy Uh, five of the days that means you're more of a happier person right and something like i learn from my mistakes so again this is something where yes we need to understand that all of us go wrong at you know at certain stage of life or we make mistakes but the but the good part of it is that yes if we are learning from mistakes and we don't give up from committing mistakes majority of the times what happens is as we grow up in our years of experience in our expertise in our specialization something which we really fear the most is making mistakes and believe me this is one stage of life when you kind of uh, restrict your growth in life this is again uh, a you know food for thought for all of you please reflect within yourself or maybe introspect a little little more uh when is it that you last made a mistake and in case if you have this answer or this response that i don't make mistakes anymore right or i don't go wrong anywhere then believe me uh you have to again little bit introspect that you might not be growing up in life anymore because mistakes is something where it means that you're trying something new you're doing something beyond your comfort zone you're challenging yourself right so that's why making mistakes is as it is something very very essential but again we have to differentiate between mistakes and blunders we cannot go on repeating mistakes so that's why we have to immediately learn from our mistakes and you know kind of rectify or make certain amendments or improvements wherever it's required now there is another tricky uh, you know there are these two tricky statements in this questionnaire only one is point number uh, 15 which reads i do what i enjoy and number 19 is i enjoy what i do there's a little bit just twist in the words right a little bit shuffle in the words so i would like to ask which one is more important point number 15 or point number uh, 19 i do what i enjoy or i enjoy what i do which is more significant which is more um, you know um, meaningful point number 15 or or 19 any one of you yes uh i i don't think so that's uh, that's a very difficult uh, i think there are some responses in the chat box so i i need to come to the chat please okay point number 19 is more meaningful oh wow unbelievable i got a i got an almost i think 10 responses there so i i can really see a lot of participation and engagement so congratulations to all of you now you are more daring and more courageous right so this is one very strong emotional skill that you've developed within the last i think uh, 20 or 25 minutes of our discussion right this is something where you all are coming out of your comfort zone okay um okay now i get a little bit more different responses where um um 
Dhananjay Deshmukh ji writes, 15 is more important than 19. Advocate Dr. Krishnan also writes, 15 is more important. And uh, yes, so um, can I have a response from any one of you where maybe you can unmute yourself and you can speak about it. Why do you feel, especially maybe to Dhananjay Deshmukh ji, why do you feel that yes, uh, 15 uh, point is more important where it is, I do what I enjoy. Any one of you, please. We will, we will ask Dr. Rashmi Khurana uh, okay. Makpal. She is the dean of the Shobit University with which we okay. are the knowledge partners. Great, great, great. Yes. And fortuitously, she's my class fellow also. Hola. And she's again from <laughs> now, Chandigarh. Okay, okay, nice, nice. Rashmi? I'll just check it out. Sure, sure. No worries, no worries. We can go ahead still. Okay, anybody else? Anybody else who wants to answer? Uh, I think Dhananjay ji had written 15th is more important. So uh, Dhananjay ji, would you mind please answering? Uh, why do you feel 15th is more important? Or anybody else, it can be even, uh, uh, you know, Phool Kumari ji writes, it's 15th is more important. Dr. Krishnan writes, 15th is more important. Dr. Krishnan, can we please have your inputs? Yes. Yes, yes, uh, yes sir. I, I don't want, I, I, I don't, I don't want to do which I don't, which, which is not giving me the enjoyment. That's why I okay. prefer 15th. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you so much, sir. That was a very honest response. And uh, you said it very, uh, you know, in clear words that I do not do what I don't enjoy. Right. So I basically I would do what I what I like and uh, which is which gives me more satisfaction. Uh, Monila writes, uh, I'll just read it out. Monila, you write that uh, uh, you know, I prefer 19 because I feel always you can't get what you like or want. Sometimes we need to go out of our enjoyment and do the works for others. Very, uh, very correctly. And I think that's a very wise response. Now, both the things, definitely both the points, number 15 and number 19, both are related to our, you know, personal happiness, our enjoyment. But the, the only concern is that, yes, majority of the times we don't get certain uh, you know we don't get such situations we don't get uh, such people around that uh, who would give us you know uh, uh, that kind of an enjoyment or they would be as per our choice so in that case maybe we will be majority of the times we'll be missing our personal happiness right or maybe then there are very few more courageous people who would take a stand for themselves and they would only do what they love doing like you know, Dr. Krishnan, right? But then maximum of us, uh, Dr. Rashmi, you are there. Uh, yeah, very um, good evening to you, ma'am. Good evening. Very good evening. Thank you so much for such a wonderful talk, wonderful session. You know, <laughs> yeah. we had so many sessions on uh, uh, law aspects relating to all legal uh, things. And uh, this is, I think, a wonderful one where, which, which I think everyone, irrespective of what the subject is, Wow. Everyone. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much, ma'am. That's so, so encouraging. And uh, ma'am, basically, we just wanted to have a little input from your uh, end. There are two different statements. One statement says that I do what I enjoy. And then there is another statement which goes like, I enjoy what I do. So what do you think? Which one is more important, more significant? Uh, I think... Uh... Uh, I will not be able to comment on it in a generalized manner, but it is right. that you know, to get the best of output, I enjoy whatever is given to me. Right. right. So uh, I do it with interest and uh, that the outcome is then wonderful. Right, right. right. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am. That's, that's so again, a very, very, um, you know, heartening response that to get the best of the productivity to be the most effective, right? I think yes. irrespective, again, of our area of specialization as professionals, this is one prime requirement. We have to be effective in our jobs, right? We have to give the best what whatever we are doing, right? And in which, again, we might not be getting many things or many circumstances, situation or people People might not be according to our choices yes. there again when we start enjoying you know the process only the journey itself then then I think everything becomes like a de-stressor or maybe we're not stressed up at all and then this is a very very strong emotional skill to be developed right where it is you are ready to accommodate 
adapt and be most flexible according to the situation circumstances and people around so this is which only an emotionally smart or an emotionally intelligent person will be able to do which is adapting or accommodating yourself according to the need of the time and situation and circumstances yes right? very true. very true very true thank you so much <laughs> thank you before, so much ma'am thank you before we proceed further she is uh, out of the six semesters she was gold medal uh, she was the topper of five semesters oh, oh my <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow. Wow. So she has to tell. She has to now. She has to uh, tell us whether intelligence was more important or emotional intelligence was important from Rashmi side. <laughs> 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 Actually, because undoubtedly, undoubtedly, like I shared with you, that Renu is our class fellow. She is also our class fellow. So she will have to share what she felt more happy: being an emotionally intelligent or intelligent. <laughs> I think uh, this word was coined much later than we passed out. You know, we just heard of uh, intelligence, IQ, and all those things, but never heard of uh, the word emotion. Yeah. Unmute, unmute yourself. Uh, Rashmi, you will have to unmute yourself. Um, Rashmi, ma'am, you you muted. Uh, please, you need to unmute yourself. I... Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Hanji. Oh, Vikas, when we we were never heard of the word emotional intelligence. It was IQs and intelligence and that too measured only by the academic results. You know, there was it was primarily your result in academics that would prove how intelligent you are during our. But now the things are very different. Uh, this uh, uh, this uh, word provides uh, wonderful insights, and uh, uh, we come across eminent uh, speakers on this, and very beautifully written books on uh, this. And gradually, I think uh, we got to learn more about it now. <laughs> Thank you so much for giving us a platform where you know our students will be highly, highly benefited because some of our research scholars have joined. And definitely, it will be wonderful for them. Thank you so much. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your very encouraging words. And I'll move on. So I think now we'll have a fair idea of like what is it that emotionally smart or emotionally intelligent people do, right? They are more open to changes, right? They welcome challenges, and most importantly, uh, they you know they love whatever is offered to them, right? They they are. Uh, uh less uh, rigid and they're more adaptable and flexible in in any sort of circumstances and that's the real mantra for their happiness for their positivity in life right uh, now let's move ahead now i think we've heard these two terminologies IQ and EQ, where definitely IQ happens to be the measure of our mental ability, our analytical, our reasoning skills, or uh, you know how fast we process thoughts, ideas, and concepts in our brain, and that's IQ. And uh, very nicely quoted by Dr. Rashmi that I think in the Indian education scenario from the very start, IQ has been a very very important or the most crucial aspect, which is always you know um, kind of um, uh, taken care of but then in the present uh, scenario there's another terminology which has developed right and we call it as eq which is emotional quotient right and this is the measure of our emotional intelligence and then um, when we uh, now i mean basically we need to understand that what does emotional quotient kind of uh, you know have an how does emotional quotient have an impact on to us so emotional quotient is related to our values our beliefs our choices our expectations right now as uh, um, i think dr krishnan said he said i would only do those things which i love doing right so now what you love in your life or maybe what is it that you more value in your life is all part of your eq emotional quotient and uh, which is basically the measure of your emotional intelligence and uh, to be a balanced personality again in any profession in any uh, domain of life we need both these aspects that is iq which is emotional quotient and our eq which is our emotional quotient right so we have to be both uh, mentally intelligent and simultaneously we have to be emotionally intelligent but the concern is that there has to be a certain proportionate 
uh, percentage for it. Now, if it is like, you know, 100% of a balanced personality, then how much percentage sharing has to be there for IQ and how much of it has to be for EQ? That's my next question. So I once again come back to the screen uh, and that is like to have a balanced personality. We have to have a certain proportion of IQ and I mean certain proportion or percentage of IQ and similarly certain for EQ. And what has to be that, you know, percentage sharing? How much percentage for IQ and how much for EQ is the question? Yes, yes. Uh, any one of you, please. I, um, yeah. I believe my question is clear. To have a 100% balanced personality, how much percentage sharing we need to give to IQ and how much to EQ? 50-50, okay. Ritika writes 50-50. Dr. Krishnan also writes 50-50. Um, yes, real. I think that's the uh, mobile. Uh, okay, now I'm getting little different responses also. Nidhi Anand writes 60% EQ, 40% IQ. Subodh writes 60-40. Subodh, you need to please clarify what is 60 and what is 40. Same is for you, Lal uh, Tejwani. 30-70. What is 30 and what is 70? Right, IQ or EQ. So please, uh, yeah, could you, I mean, um, you know, um, uh, edit your responses. And Shubham Sharma writes 50 50. Anybody with different responses? 50 50, 40 60. Okay, now Monila writes 70% uh, EQ and 30% IQ. Full Kumari writes 80% IQ and 20% EQ. Uh, so both 60 40. Okay, okay. And uh, Lal Tejwani ji writes 70 percent EQ, 30 IQ. We receive a response from Uma Ma'am. It is uh, 90 percent IQ and 10 percent EQ. Okay, uh, so so a lot of mixed response coming in, right? But I think uh, we are giving a proportionate sharing to EQ, or maybe many of you have even given a, a major, um, you know, sharing to EQ, ranging from 60% to 80%. Uma Ma'am has a little different response where she's given 90% sharing to, uh, you know, IQ and 10% to EQ. So, Uma Ma'am, would you mind once again, please, uh, unmuting yourself and letting us know why 90% IQ and only 10% EQ? Uh, Ma'am, I feel, you know what? Uh... From uh, that's my thinking. Any okay. which way from uh, see, uh, there are many, many person who like uh, like to you know learn so many things, so many things. And I mean, from childhood till uh, you know, we all are toddlers. Actually, me, right. whatever, right. whether it is law, whether it is a doctor, whether it is an engineer, whether right. it is any of the profession, it is right. very uh, tough to do it. But for me, I prefer like uh, IQ. That I, I think that I will give as a 90%. I, I don't know whether I will give a proper appreciate, a proper response. For me, 90, I will stand by. And EQ, of course, yes, emotion is also there. But once when you're focused in your uh, goals, you said, and automatically your emotions also will come, come with that. For okay. me, education matters. Okay. Uh, not only, I mean, for generally I'm talking about, for me, I think education plays a vital role. From right. childhood till uh, and you know what, right. I'm just one uh, one thing I would say. So, I am not saying I will not compare. If uh, some person is saying if one person is very uh, rich and one person is very see, for example, there are two. One person, one is highly educated, and that person has little uh, money. And second right. is he heavy money. High. I mean, he's very uh, filthy rich, and he doesn't have an education. Right. For example, if right. if the person dies, for example, I should not go ahead. If but right. the people will not snatch your degree. No one will snatch your degree. IQ, nobody can snatch. For me, True. I think True. IQ and the True. education matters. So I have given True. a 90% in that. True. True. And True. along with that, of course, emotion blends. It comes along. So I have given 10% for that. I don't know whether I've justified my answer, but for my thinking, I think IQ, um, uh, education and intelligence matters a lot, ma'am. Very true. In this Very scenario. True. Very too. I, I once again really, really appreciate uh, Uma, ma'am. You are always like, you know, uh, most 
wholeheartedly you confess and irrespective of what others think right you you always say that's my opinion and uh, that's the, exactly. what is we yeah we primarily have to come forward with now uh, education and you really really emphasized upon the importance or significance of importance definite uh, of education which surely cannot be denied ma'am i think this happens to be a you know whole all together a, a platform of very educated and um, you know a very uh, kind of uh, enriched people right and uh, yeah that's why we are into i mean there's this next level of discussion but throughout our course of education there has been something which has really acted as a very strong driving force that was i mean especially now you need to reflect back because you have this real intense love and longing for education and this intense love and longing or that uh, that very strong connect towards you know grasping knowledge or you know acquiring knowledge is your eq is basically what you value the most in your life and you value education the most in your life so something which has always kept you more inclined towards you know uh, education and and has always kept you going on that you know i have all i always have to attain more information i have to always you know gain a lot of knowledge and uh, i have to be always into this learning process this is all yes, your eq this is your willingness to learn and this okay. is it yeah yeah i mean what you've learned i mean of course the subject that you've you know taken up or whatever concepts that you've learned whatever you've memorized that's of course your part of your mental functioning right that's your mental ability right so that's your iq but then something which kept you going on without you know getting um, uh, demotivated without getting um, you know feeling that yes this is too much i cannot study this much right with a stronger will power with a stronger determination these are all part of eq so these are those emotional skills i i have a lot of students on this forum so i would over want all of you to kindly jot down right basically right now the words that i'm speaking up these are all part of your emotional skills that you need to develop first of all first and foremost is willingness to learn right you might be you know put into the best educational institute with the most um, you know qualified teachers around but in case if you're not willing to learn nobody can teach you anything right so this is your emotional skill or your emotional intelligence part of your emotional apart from that then we say you know i have to be more focused i have to be more determined i have to keep up my patience i have to give my you know perseverance put up, put up my perseverance right i have to be more persistent in my efforts all these words are part of your emotional skills right and people who have it more within them are definitely uh, you know not academically better performers but then they are you know they are more outgoing they're more expressive they would always be um, you know i think they would value many more things in life inclusive of life and that's what keeps them you know going on without getting harassed without getting frustrated or maybe ending up saying that i cannot do it anymore or i quit right so these are the uh, you know the signs of emotionally skilled emotionally capable or emotionally intelligent people now let me come back uh, i think i got a lot of responses and uh, one of you even said i think it was full kumari full kumari had mentioned that it is 80% eq and 20% iq so let me reveal the you know um, the suspense yes it is 80% eq and 20% iq this can vary from 80 to 90% eq and iq can be as low as you know uh, maybe 10 to 20% but the concern is that yes the irony is that our education system still primarily focuses on the iq development and uh, uh, i think we need more um, you know uh uh management and head of the institutes like dr rashmi who have now started valuing this eq aspect right so uh, in fact i'll go down now this is something which i was earlier talking about uh, 2080 uh, you know how do we um, basically showcase or how do we symbolically represent the uh, the balanced personality and its um, you know percentage sharing in lieu of iq and eq now iq is that 15 to 20% of an individual or of of any personality uh, and this uh, and rest 
if you know 80 to 85 percent is all uh, eq which is best kind of you know um uh, what do you say uh represent an iceberg model now iceberg is an ice structure in which the real body the real you know size of the iceberg is under the waters which cannot be seen right uh, so that's 80 to 85 percent of the major you know the chunk or the major size of the the whole iceberg is under the water seen with the naked eye and rest only 15 to 20 percent is above the waters which is which can be seen by the outside world right and that is primarily the iq now what is within the waters which is which is not much visible with with the naked eye is is what you value the most in your life right your values your principles your ethics your beliefs your motivation your your all together your attitude towards life. now 15 to 20 percent above the waters or maybe something which is like this, everybody, or everybody, or everybody is yeah uh, krishnan ji kindly mute yourself <laughs> yeah yeah so 15 to 20 percent which i said is visible to anybody or to everybody is most of the times our iq now right now also because we are an unknown group of people we haven't met each other before so the only connect that we have with each other is on the basis of our iq how much knowledge do i have to share with you all and how much are you responding back to me is basically the only connect of our you know um, ability of kind of processing our thoughts sharing of our knowledge right so this is all iq but in this also something which has more strongly connected us or something which has acted as a very strong uh, driving force is our willingness to participate, willingness to share our choices, willingness to respond and actually make it an engaging and interactive session. And this all has been part of our EQ. Now, again, I think something very, very significant, which has been influencing, um, especially the professional right this is the difference between the skill and will you might be the most skilled the most capable person right with the years of experience and you know that hardcore specialization in your domain whether it is you know uh, those uh, you know the criminal cases that you're taking up or is it like you are a civil uh, you know rights lawyer whatever is your specialization that's your skill set but then if you're not willing to kind of you know uh, contribute not willing to participate not willing to you know you know be a part of the uh, the process or the journey where your skill set is required then your skill also goes all in waste so primarily we have to be more willing willing to yes you know participate to contribute and to give back our best especially in an area which kind of fits into the best according to our skill set right now um again i think uh, something which i just touched and i just wanted to just touch it once again here only emotional skills or emotional intelligence is primarily related to what we value the most in our life right you can have anything you know i mean as a student maybe you value a good score or maybe you value um, you know an adventure trip or you maybe value um, you know a night out right so these are some short term you know goals and objectives but then we have some terminal wall values which i think more of these um, you know these uh, seasoned professionals on these for on this forum would understand terminal value is your final goal final objective in life something which you you know want to attain that's my the real uh, you know um, objective in life this is what i am you know putting in all the efforts today that's why i'm working day and night uh, you know i'm 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 kind of going through all these pressures in life because maybe i want to have a comfortable life tomorrow right so now that comfortable or a prosperous life is my terminal value that's my final goal my final objective right or somebody would say my final goal final objective is happiness right somebody would say my final goal final objective is you know self respect i want to earn a lot of self respect in life right or maybe i want to earn a lot of wisdom in life now let's see to it that if you have these some you know ultimate goals in life then there are certain um, you know 
procedures or there is some certain desired behavior or some you know approach to reach up to these terminal values and this approach to reach up to these terminal values are known as instrumental values right and these instrumental values are some of those emotional skills that we need to develop within ourselves now let's see what are those emotional skills now somebody aspiring to have a prosperous or a comfortable life as his or her terminal you know goal then you have to have be ambitious from today you cannot you know be into the habit of having a laid back approach to life or yes you know into the habit of procrastination you have to give your best from today so that tomorrow you have a uh, uh, Okay, so that tomorrow you are actually able to attain that ultimate goal that is a prosperous or a comfortable life. Now, if you say that yes, happiness or maybe um, you know satisfaction is my real goal, my real uh, you know uh, terminal goal. Now, for that you have to be honest, mm -hmm. you have to be sincere, you have to. Yeah, somebody who would not, you know, resort to any un unfair or unethical means, then only you can actually have a life of contentment, real peace or happiness, right? So basically, I think we need to right now, especially as a student, as a budding professional, we have to be more focused on our instrumental values, or maybe on our approach to reach up to those terminal values in life, because this really, really matters, right? And these are those emotional skills, which keep you more, you know, aligned, or maybe more channelized towards your ultimate goal or to your path of success, which can be um, you know what um, uh, an exciting life ahead a life of peace a life of freedom a life of happiness whatever you think is is your ultimate your goal or ultimate objective and then something which i just you know had brought it down for uh, primarily for my um, you know the these uh, this legal community the the you know the advocates and the lawyers happen to be on this forum i think most importantly you all hold this responsibility of creating a just and a and an impartial society right and that's what is your primarily your profession about so where uh, the there we need to develop some you know, some stronger emotional skills and which happen to be uh, first and foremost being empathetic. Now, empathy is one of the highest level of emotional intelligence where exactly you're able to understand the situation, the circumstances, the uh, the um, um, yeah the situation and circumstances or all together the scenario at the other person's end right before kind of reaching up to any conclusion or maybe you know interpreting anything you would always try to, i think that's what you do that's what you do a complete case study right so you would analyze you would evaluate you would um, kind of make an a you know a complete report about it a case about it so that you are able to best understand that what were the you know the uh, the circumstances or under what kind of um, you know uh, event or episode this uh, situation this event or episode must have happened right and then uh, for which definitely what is really required is that we have to take up that we have to put in that extra effort. We have to uh, start by taking initiative, right? For which at many times we need to collaborate our efforts, uh, right? Where uh, yes, maybe a group of you know lawyers are together doing a case study or we take references or we seek advice from each other, right? So this goes back also. If you are asking for help, similarly, it is your responsibility also to give advice, give recommendations, give suggestions, or maybe maximum extend help to each other. So uh, I have kind of summed up, you know, this was what I primarily wanted to talk about in this session today, and primarily focusing upon those some of those essential, you know, emotional skills that we need to develop during our, you know, journey of growing up as a more progressive and a more, um, you know, uh, what an effective professional, right. Sure, sure. But beyond that, in case if you have any doubts, any queries, anything which was not clear, I am really willing to take up your, you know, doubts also if time permits us. So yes. 
Yes, the subtle because, lift, yeah, the subtle difference between the emotional intelligence and intelligence is also one of the issue which keeps on coming in the mind as to whether there's a subtle difference or there's a vast difference. True, true. Because uh, the fact that the what Rashmi also said that the emotional intelligence has diversified into self management, awareness, true. social social <laughs> awareness and relationship management, and that is one of the reasons that wherein we find that a lot of people we find that. Because of the academic pressures, keep on studying, and when the time comes to interact, especially within the society or within the corporate world or the life itself, True. that is what they say that from 2D to 3D, the life itself automatically changes. Right. Now, uh, if you had to sum up, what could be the five steps wherein one can rework upon themselves? Because they always say that if you have to move in life, you have to revisit yourself, review yourself. Right. And then reload yourself to a better energies. True, so true. what, according to you, can be done to improve those? What are the some simple formulas? Okay. Uh, of course, uh, in fact, that's why I had limited my session. Emotional intelligence is a very vast intelligence and has a lot of aspects to be developed. And first and foremost, it starts with self. As much as clarity that we can have about ourselves as an individual right uh, what is it that that's why I started with that self-evaluation in fact right so I think uh, what emotionally intelligent people do more often is they are more into this process of self-introspection before taking up any decision before resorting to any you know conclusion they would always evaluate analyze or kind of you know uh, get deeper within into their own thought process that am i doing the right is this my forte is this my domain or is it that i need to improve somewhere or i need to put in a more effort so uh, time to time we really need to introspect ourselves right i think this should be a daily practice a daily uh, custom that we have to you know uh, kind of abide by the more we are self-aware, the more we have a clarity about our strengths, about our areas of improvement, right? Uh, the opportunities that we have around, I think we would always be more clear with our actions, with our, um, you know, the choices in life that we have to take up. Uh, and that would keep us always more, you know, channelized and organized in life. So self-awareness, which comes from self-introspection is something, you know, we have to practice more often. And then um, something which I, um, you know, uh, really want to, again, uh, develop is like, as a very strong or the one of the highest level of emotional, uh, you know, skill is empathy. Now, empathy is where basically, you would always before reaching up to any conclusion or any judgment about anybody else you would always look deeper into other person's you know side or reflect that what is going at their front before you know giving any verdict or any any sort of uh, you know decision that this person uh, is always you know in a um, is frustrated, does not respond well, is very rude in his, his or her responses, try to maybe, yes, you know, be a little more empathetic, understand their situation, right? And that would always help us to have better, uh, you know, interpersonal relations or be more cordial in our, uh, uh, you know, uh, interpersonal connects with, with each other, right? And this, as it is, it's a very strong source of strength, which keeps you more going on. And uh, I think willingness, willingness to learn, willingness to adapt, willingness to change, which is one of the most difficult thing to do, right? But then, and this is what most of the emotionally smart and intelligent people do. They're always willing, willing to, yes, come out of their comfort zones, right? That's why I said key willingness to learn, to change, to, to adapt is very difficult because we all get fixed up in a comfort zone. Right. And especially this is a more danger syndrome, right, amongst the more experienced people that all of us, we develop a comfort zone and we don't want to come out of it. We don't want to, you know, we are so much used to that, that routine, that similar lifestyle that, yes, it's very, very, uh, you know, difficult for us to, to come out of it. So uh, that's that's the third aspect that I, I wanted to share. And uh, Coping up with your emotions, right? Um, managing your emotions. I think this is something which majority of the times we have a confusion or we have a difficulty with, uh, you know, um, kind of uh, managing or, uh, yeah, bearing with it. Now, emotions um, are, in fact, very strong part of each individual, right? Yeah. Uh, pardon? Uh, yes, Mr. Yeah. Vikas? 
No, no, nothing. Okay. Yeah, emotions is a very, um, you know, uh, significant. In fact, we are 70% made up of our emotions. Right. I mean, like, especially when we see the body constituency, so the our bodies are like 70 percent made up of water. And when we see the constituency of our mind, our brain, it is 70 percent emotions. Right. So we have to be, again, very well aware of our emotions, especially that's why that self-analysis, that self-evaluation was done. That, you know, what kind of emotions that you carry most of the times? Are you a happy-go-lucky person or is it that most of the time you're frustrated, you are a complaining person? person, right? And you are mostly in that cribbing mode. Then even if you are a cribber or if you are like, you know, kind of, uh, you know, frustrated about many things, then what is the source of that frustration? So knowing the exact source, the exact reason, right? Knowing that, yes, your emotions are real. Now for the, in this, during this pandemic time, I've been doing a lot of sessions on fear, right? You know, overcoming your fears or understanding your fears or countering your fears. Now, first and foremost, which I really want to tell, you know, everybody or anybody, fear is a very, very natural phenomena. And, but then we have to understand the reason for that fear. Is that a realistic fear or it is just a, uh, you know, uh, maybe something which I'm influenced under peer pressure or societal pressure because everybody is, you know, scared so I thought I should also be scared. So know the exact reason for your every emotion that you're carrying, right? Be well aware. I think this is again something which goes back to self-awareness also. And uh, most importantly, I think enjoy do whatever you, you, you know, whatever in the process that you are, right? Enjoy your journey, enjoy your learning, enjoy your profession, right? When you start loving your work, when you start loving your um, um, uh, means you know uh, the the process that you're involved in. I think you're never under a pressure. You're never under a stress. And be busy working. I think these all negative thoughts, negative feelings, kind of approach, or you know, get overpowering onto only those people who have extra um, you know thinking time or who are into the process of overthinking. So the more busier you are, I think you're more positive and you're more channelized in life. I think Mr. Vikas, I could answer back, um, you know, uh, fairly. <laughs> yeah. You, you, you didn't answer back, but you answered it rightly. Answer <laughs> back you. would be in a sense that uh, <laughs> as, a, as, as, as a lawyer, you will always think it in a, a two-way platform. And rightly, you said that just like what is the common, like what we were saying, that it is intelligence and it, then it is True. emotional intelligence. True. In our time, it was no, no meant no, no, no means as uh, it is commonly said, it's next opportunity. True. And, True. and what you rightly said that as long as you are thinking how to work uh, empathy, that is why they say first, if you step into the shoes of that person, you will, you will understand True. the pain. And that is why we also say that the wearer knows where the shoe pinches. So it's very easy to say that he's not that happy or uh, happy to go person, but sometimes the circumstances are there, but you are rightly said that if one actually works on that, you can improve yourself because they say that the grass always looks green on the other side, but actually the other person who is actually undergoing something, uh, if you actually discuss with him or the person who is undergoing that depression or a failure, if he actually shares the views of the perspectives with someone. And I personally feel that uh, what is commonly said is that I is illness and V is wellness. So as long as we shift from I to V, then the society works, uh, works much better. Uh, that's why we say that team is uh, together, uh, together the efforts of everyone achieves more. And I will just see if, as to whether there are questions. Uh, what are the, this is by La Lal Tejwani, what are the other types of questions and individual needs to be aware upon and how to work upon that. Okay. Of course, uh, now we've reached up to another, uh, you know, next level quotient and we call it the spiritual quotient. Now, uh, spirit, uh, in fact, um, you know, is is uh, the soul or the, uh, you know, jo hum kehte antar atma hamari, right? Or jahan par, um, I think, uh, in fact, emotional quotient and spiritual quotient are somewhere definitely more interlinked also, right? When I was talking about the willingness part, right? That's, that's your part of your uh, spiritual quotient as well. And something, um, again, uh, these days, like people, you know, kind of uh, tell you to meditate and uh, maintain your peace of mind and specific, specifically attain this, uh, you know, uh, next level of uh, skill, which is known as mindfulness, 
now mindfulness is something where you are actually freed from all you know worries and tensions and you are just existing in the present right and for which it is like again you are you you can actually experience every feeling every emotion but then somewhere you're not affected by it right so that's your uh, spiritual quotient in fact i'm also in the process of learning it right uh, every day a new forum a new group of people so i also have a lot of takeaways but then yes i think the next level is the spiritual quotient that we uh, need to develop and in fact once you've attained that you actually reach up to the stage of self actualization now self actualization is something where everything gets selfless right aapko you're not worried about your personal gains and your personal achievements ya aapko bura lagna ya koi cheez you know kuch koi aapko pinch nahi karta hai koi aapko ki koi cheez se harassment ya frustration nahi hota hai you are always into that okay this is this has happened and this has passed away and next would also happen and that would also pass away and then you're just you know going step by step experiencing every situation as the way it comes to you so uh yes spiritual quotient is something which has to be next developed which i think for which we need certain years of experience and wisdom uh i think before first of all that we have to be emotionally uh, you know more intelligent and then only we reach up to the next level yeah but at the same time they say that all this uh, looks very easy and yeah. when you actually perform uh yeah. i just remember that it said that if to do was as easy as to say then poor would have lived in palaces and the horses would have flown in the air so right <laughs> it, right uh, and yeah. it's always also said that it's very easy to uh, it's difficult to practice than what is to preach exactly very true very true and and the once if actually one works on that yes it's a a different level as i say what can be from a 2d to 3d vision the the entire dimension of that entire picture changes in the same way if we change our thought process but i also feel that it's if we, even if it's an emotional intelligence or intelligence the success also acts as a catalyst whatever one may say that you, uh, you should also take the failures to in stride it looks very simplistic to say that failures are pillar to success but continuous failures failures also demoralize best of the persons that, that's my personal take let's assume there's a cricket player he he scores continuously ducks or maybe he's out on less than 10 runs even the best player would be shaky in once he comes out to 15 innings because failure is one platform on the mindset which actually shakes someone what is your take on that um failures is pardon sir what was the last statement i, I said i said failures do shake some uh, does shake uh, one's mind psychology True. you may True. say that fa- failures are pillars of the success fa- failures True. are the lessons to be learned but sometimes life doesn't give you a second opportunity as they say life is also like a flowing True. water river you can't touch the same water twice True. so sometimes True. the opportunities doesn't knock the door twice right right so in the so, light of uh, it they say that remove the door and let it come inside right right so uh, yes uh, of course very rightly said uh, mr vikas that many times we don't get majority of the times we don't get that second opportunity right and once that opportunity missed out it's gone forever but then i think i would still say that uh, sometimes failure is uh, is again a disguised opportunity that maybe you were at the, actually at the wrong path or you know you took up the wrong decision right or maybe it was not the right time for you so maybe yes you opt have to opt for an alternative way or maybe you know you had to put in more efforts or something yes something there was as a missing link so basically that's a more of a, a learning or a realization that you know it was not as per the expectations or maybe this was not your way to do it so you have to look out for other other ways or other options to be worked out so uh, Uh, yeah i mean getting absolutely uh, diffused or absolutely disheartened with a failure is wrong but yes changing of uh, you know your uh, uh, choices is 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 of course you know something which you can take it as a positive thing from out of a failure that okay this does not work out plan a did not work out then definitely i need to have a plan b for it so we will not take uh, more questions but at the ra- as you rightly said that the that the english alphabets have 26 alphabets so let's assume a alphabet fails we have 24 25 more alphabets to work upon so exactly so yeah. on this parting note uh, we can only say that the insights given by you uh, are on a different level and i am quite sure that those who have 
connected with us on the Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, as well as on this platform, they would definitely have a brighter uh, things to look forward because they say that in the darkest cloud, even the slightest ray of sun gives you the brightest hope. And even after the good rains, you have a rainbows. Rainbows give a pleasing look as well as the pleasant things to look forward. And before we part for today, uh, today Tomorrow's session is Faceless Assessment System of Income Tax, New Way Forward by uh, Ma'am Poonam Khaira Sidhu. She's the Chief Commissioner of Income Tax at Amritsar. So do stay connected with us at 4 p.m. as to how we can have a faceless assessment. But today we had a face-to-face -face interaction with Manjula Ma'am. So it's not a faceless assessment. But yes, assessing ourselves in the right way and moving forward uh, is a life what lessons we have learned for today. And they say if you learn even a one lesson from an hour's webinar or an hour's reading of book, that's good enough to move you forward. Uh, thank you to all the participants who connected with us on the different social media platforms. And that is what makes us move, move forward. And we are quite sure that we will request Manjula Ma'am to come again to give the insights because she said that I've just shown you uh, a part of the trailer. I'm remembered of the movie, it says, uh, to abhi trailer hai, mere dost picture to abhi baki hai. <laughs> so, actually. So, uh, everyone, enjoy your day. And being lawyers, we have to go back to work, but with a positive energy, positive vibrations. After your uh, talk, I'm quite sure that people will at least work intelligently and more emotionally strong. And the society as such would be a better place to live in. Thank you.